into one, two, three different Goodwills in Peoria, Illinois. So let me know in the comments at the end of the video, which Goodwill do you think had the best stuff? I am at a music conference with students and I just dropped them off Taco Bell. So I am off to do some thrifting at Goodwill. So excited. We're going to see if over the course of the next three days, I can go to three different Goodwills and we'll see which one's the best one. Here is Goodwill number one. It's been a while since I've done a thrift with me video, so if you enjoy thrift with me videos, definitely leave me a big thumbs up. But the first thing I found at this Goodwill was a pair of Uggs. I wasn't sure if they were kids or women's, but they looked to be in really good condition. And I generally do pretty well with these kinds of Uggs, and so I threw them in my cart. I also found this pair of dingo boots, but upon further inspection, these were actually children's boots and they weren't even real leather so I did end up leaving those behind even though I thought they were pretty cool and they were priced decently but comps just were not there to justify non-leather children's dingo cowboy boots. You guys know that I always get so confused when it comes to Nikes. I cannot figure out which ones are the good ones worth picking up and which ones I just need to leave behind. But these were really flawed, so I knew that they needed to stay behind. And then here is what I'm pretty sure is a fake Christian Dior shirt. It just didn't feel very good. The tag wasn't super convincing to me. The buttons were not of like super high quality. Like a lot of times on designer luxury pieces, even the buttons will have the name of the brand on them. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this was a for real legit Christian Dior shirt and if so, a oh, whoopsie, but to my knowledge, it just wasn't firing on all cylinders. All right, I'm finished with Goodwill. It is now a little after two. I'm very hungry. So I'm gonna go to this Mediterranean restaurant right here. I'm literally just gonna walk there, so excited. All right, it's kind of hard to see. Oh, you can kind of see it right there, but I am at my second Goodwill. It is the second day of the conference. Let's go. Like I mentioned earlier, the first place I typically go when I get to a Goodwill is the shoe section. And if there is a cart of new shoes out, even better, which is why I was able to scoop up those beautiful Cole Haan shoes that you're gonna see later in the haul. I also saw a lot of rollerblades, like at all three Goodwills, I feel like. And this was a pair of Nike rollerblades, which is why I really wanted to do a little bit of research because I have had a lot of luck with specialty Nike shoes, like Nike snowboarding boots and things of that nature. These, however, comps were not amazing for, especially because this particular pair of rollerblades were pretty beat up. And typically, I never pass up on a Bob Ross painting shirt, but this one did have some holes in it, so I did have to leave it behind. And just like that new cart of shoes, these are the new racks of clothing, and this is probably where I found the majority of the stuff that I brought home with me. And finally, here is apparently a view of my crotch, but I'm going to start sorting through everything that's in my cart. I'm not gonna take everything home with me but I put, find like a quiet corner of the Goodwill. I put everything on a rack and I just start looking through everything to make sure that there are not any flaws that I missed when I first found the item. And so I just put everything on the rack, look through everything carefully and you'll find that there are a few things actually that I end up leaving behind because I do find flaws that I didn't see the first time around. That Goodwill was a lot better than the first one. Um, it was better because it was better. <laughs> I mean, they had a lot of new racks out and I did get some things from there. And I don't know, it's like pretty early on I found some decent things which gave me faith that there were more decent things throughout the store. I don't know that there were any super big home runs, but I was able to get more stuff and stuff that in general, I feel like I was more excited about. I also did leave behind a lot of stuff that maybe I would have gotten like a year or two ago, but 
I don't know, just from experience and just kind of with how the trends have changed, um, I knew to leave those things behind. I think I've had the best luck at this particular Goodwill. This is the third Goodwill of my trip. This is where I found like fry boots last year. I don't know, lots of great shoes. I remember clothes were kind of tough. And at the same Goodwill a few years ago, I found like an office monopoly? I don't remember what it was. It was like an office board game and it sold for like $100. So here's to hoping that the streak continues at this Goodwill. Thank you for thrifting with me. My name is Becky Park and I was actually in Peoria with some students who had made the prestigious Allstate Choir. <laughs> And these kids rehearse for like two and a half days for like 10 hours a day. And while they're in rehearsal, I like to spend a lot of time at thrift stores sourcing for my reselling business. I did actually also speak on a panel of BIPOC music educators, which was really cool and special to be among some of my amazing friends and colleagues and speaking about our experience being in the music education field. And I did go to one other really great session, but I spent the most of my time thrifting. And like I said, I went to three different Goodwills. I also hit up a clothes mentor and a different resale shop, and I'll do that haul in a separate video. So make sure you subscribe if you like a good haul video, because that clothes mentor, I'm looking at the bag right now with all the stuff in it, that clothes mentor was a fire. It was a lot of really great stuff. They were having a sale. But today we're talking about Goodwill. And between the three stores, I did get a lot of good stuff. So let's jump right into the haul. So the first Goodwill that I went to, let's see, on their tag they actually state which Goodwill it is. The first Goodwill was Pioneer Parkway, I believe. And I'll be honest, like it was kind of slim pickings. The shoes, I feel like I can always tell by the shoe section if it's going to be a good Goodwill or not. And the shoes were rough. It was all like very small sizes with an also just not a lot of good stuff. It almost made me feel like that particular Goodwill and maybe all of the Peoria Goodwills, to be honest with you, if maybe they pull a lot of items to sell online because they're kept being commercials or like you know they'd play songs like really old like 80 songs and then every once in a while there'd be like a commercial for goodwill and they'd be like if you like the stuff that you see in the store check out goodwill online because there's a lot of great stuff there and i'm like y'all are pulling the good stuff that gets donated to the store to sell online so i don't know that's a theory that i have but the first item that i will show you is frank and eileen I don't know if I've ever found this brand in the wild, to be honest with you. Um, it's, you know, a pretty expensive brand. I do feel like it had this crazy hype around it maybe a few years ago. The hype isn't as crazy, but it's a nice, like, just solid white, very thick, very sturdy button-up shirt. Um, it's woven in Italy. I think I said it was a size large. It's 100% cotton. Um, I don't know. I just thought I would try it. I paid $5.44 for it. I'm hoping to be able to sell it for at least $35. I did not look up comps for this at all, but if I could get $35 for that, I would be pretty happy. Okay, but now that I've taken the time to actually do a little bit of research and check out the comps, holy cow, I can actually probably get at least $40, $50 for this easy. Now, I have had such good luck with this brand. It is just like a um, vintage brand. I don't, it's, it's not like really a popular brand, but they make really good vintage stuff, like very good grandma core stuff. The brand is Capacity. I had this amazing like cat knitting, sweater situation that I sold a while ago from this brand. Um, it's in a size small and it's 55% Raimi, which is a great material and 45% cotton. Look at this vest. So it's like a gardening vest. So if you look, I don't, I don't even know what, oh, it's like a beehive. So there's like a beehive with little bees. Um, there's like little flower. I think these are seed packets actually. And this is showing that there's like flowers in there. There's carrots, there's more flowers. Um, there's a big sunflower. There is something that says strawberries. It says strawberries in here. It's basically just like a gardener's dream. Like if you know someone who gardens, they need this vest. It's so cute. Um, oh, and it says sunflower here. And again, I'm, I'm very ignorant when it comes to a lot of things. So first of all, a lot of it is just straight up knit into the sweater to begin with. But then there is like, I want to call it embroidery, but it might be cross stitching. I don't know. Like, I don't know what these terms are. Um, but there is like 
stuff to add more texture if you can see and there's like this beading on the inside of the sunflower head to show like the seeds i mean so much energy and thought went into this vest i'm obsessed i paid 5.44 for it i probably would have paid more money for that i just thought it was such a special piece okay this i did look up comps for beforehand because i was like I don't know how I feel about it. The brand is Judy Blue. I've actually never sold anything that's Judy Blue that isn't a pair of jeans. This is a denim jacket in like a cow print. <sighs> Who is out here wearing cow prints? I'm not sure. It's not me. Someone is wearing it though because these are selling. Um, this was priced at $13.72. Now the reason I got it is because I have had good luck with the brand and it's new with tags. And so for those reasons, I was like, okay, let's just give it a shot. I think that I should be able to sell it for at least $50. It's very interesting. I do want to meet the person that ends up buying this just to see like, what do you do in your free time? Do you have pets? What kind of books do you like to read? I don't know. I feel like I want to know everything there is to know about the person that owns that jacket. This was a new to me brand and I don't know, like this label looked pretty cool. So I was like, let me just stop and look up comps really quickly. And comps were great. The brand is Howler Bros. Um, and this is in a size small. It's 100% cotton. They wanted $5.44 for it. It is a button up shirt, a men's shirt in like this just kind of khaki color. And I don't know, like comps for these kinds of shirts from this brand were pretty high. I don't remember how much off the top of my head. I want to say definitely at least 35. Otherwise, I wouldn't have picked it up. But um, yeah, comps were pretty good. I'm excited to try out a new brand, especially a new to me men's brand. So we'll see how that does. Um, I don't typically pick up Banana Republic, but this just kind of caught my eye because it looked really nice. So this is a Banana Republic hacking jacket which i don't know what that is but it's in a size eight i really liked the fabric on this i like kind of that speckled detail i believe there's some wool in here if i'm not mistaken yeah it's a 51 percent wool and then polyester viscose spandex blend i also really liked this detail of like the elbow patch and i liked the gold buttons so when i looked up comps for this particular style of jacket from banana republic they were comping pretty well they were comping at like that 40 to 50 dollar mark which is why i was like okay i'm just gonna go ahead and try it out now this is a little bit older banana republic they do have underneath the care tag they have a little tag that states when the jacket is from and this is from 2014 which means this is 10 years old basically um, but it's in such great condition again and the style I thought was so classic and so nice. We're just gonna see how it does. And it was $8.16. Hoping I can get at least $40 for it. We'll see. This seems so whatever, but I have actually picked up this brand before and done so well with it. The brand is American Giant. This is in a size extra small. And this, like, whatever just zip up hoodie that looks like it could have come from Costco, this was still comping for like $25, $35. So I was like, okay, I'm just gonna try it and see what happens. And let's see, they were asking, where is the tag? They were asking for $5.44. So my hope is that it's a quick flip that people who really like this brand snatch it up. Um, I would not have picked it up though if it were not for that brand and the fact that I had sold it pretty well in the past. Um, okay, so this is by the brand J Jill. It's pure Jill. This was also $5.44. It's a size medium. And to be honest, like, although I do enjoy selling J Jill, I don't typically pick it up for more than $5, which this was. Part of me though is like, do I want this? And there's actually a good number of things in these boxes that um, I sourced for either myself or for my kids or for my husband. But I was like, do I want this? Okay, probably not. I'll probably just, I didn't even try it on at the store, but it's cause I think it's so pretty. Like look at, I don't know, again, there's like just the fabric itself, but then there's this like extra stitching that's just extra, like it doesn't need to be there. I just thought it added such a cool element. It also is not meant to be worn over this scuba knit from uh, Lululemon, but I don't know. I think it's really darling. It's just something that speaks to me. It's very springy. It probably will not sell for more than like $25, $30, but I'm okay with that. I just had to bring it home with me and give it new life. Okay, so speaking of getting things for family members, I go to the kids section of every Goodwill that I go to hoping to score something for, you know, either of my kids. I've got a 10 year old daughter and a six year old son. This was $3.92 and look how cute it is. It is 
um, Polo Ralph Lauren and it's in a size, I don't know, 140 it says. Um, it'll be big on him now, but he'll be able to wear it probably next year. It's in great condition, love to get clothes for the kiddos for super cheap. I'm also always on the prowl for stuff for my mom. My mom's favorite store is Talbot's. There is not a Talbot's near her where she lives in Seattle. And so whenever I find things in her size and in styles that I think she will like, I try to pick it up for her. So this was $10.88. It's in a size eight petite. It's like this beautiful, um, like wine colored corduroy blazer jacket. And if she tries it on and is like, mm, it doesn't really fit, then I can still sell this for probably at least $30, $35. So even if she doesn't end up wearing it, I think that's still a good pickup. Same with this little number. Um, this is a great little vest. It's in a medium petite from Talbot and it's got a very classic plaid print to it. I could sell this easily for at least $25, $30 and I had $8.16 into that. But I showed her both of these over FaceTime and she said, yeah, I want both of them. So you who are watching at home cannot have them, but we'll see. We'll see if they fit. Um, so like I said, the first section I typically go to at the thrift store is shoes. And in looking through the shoes, I was like, oh, these shoes are pretty rough, which means the store is going to be pretty rough. And I was there for a good amount of time and didn't walk out with that much stuff. I did pick up a few pairs of shoes. Um, this was one of them. It's a pair of Reeker, kind of like slide on clogs would you call these clogs um i got these for a couple reasons they were six dollars and eighty cents i do pretty well with reeker Ugh, i'm now noticing that the inner lining is a little jacked up it's a little like ripped and flawed um but i got these because they're a bigger size they're a 42 which translates to this i don't remember off the top of my head and the exterior is pretty cute but like i said i'm just now noticing there's a lot of not aware on the inside that I'm gonna have to um, disclose, which is fine. I think they'll still sell for hopefully 30-ish dollars. Um, and then I got two pairs of Uggs. So this was just a pair of like mid-calf green Sherpa lined uh, boots from Ugg. The exterior is in pretty good condition. And these were in like a size seven or something, a little bit smaller of a size, but I think they'll still do pretty well. Let's see. Oh, US size six actually. And to be honest with you, if I show these to my mom, I feel like she will want them, but like she doesn't need them in Seattle. So I probably just won't even show her, although she might be watching this video. So sorry, mom, like I'm not gonna let you try these on, but um, I'm hoping these can sell for at least 35, 40 bucks. And I had $6 and 80 cents into those. And then I got one last pair of Uggs from that Goodwill on Pioneer Parkway. It's this black side zip ankle high, just kind of like a sneaker. So they have a black leather exterior. These are in a size nine and a half. Um, and these are a women's shoe. So I thought they were just really nice. They were in really good condition. Again, I did not look up comps or anything. I'm hoping I can sell these for at least 40, if not more. And I had $6.80 into those. So that's everything I got from the first Goodwill. Keep track of how you think I'm doing at each Goodwill. Because like I said, let me know down in the comments which Goodwill you feel like I did the best at. But let me go ahead and clean this stuff up and we'll go on to the next box. So the next Goodwill that I went to was on University. So the first thing I'll show you is a Talbot's piece, probably in my mom's size, but I'm gonna list it because it's not really her style. And I just thought it was so cool. So it's vintage Talbots. You can see that old label in a size medium. It's 100% merino wool. But look at this vest and it's got these like gold studs on it. I just thought it was so cool. Um, it was $5.44. And then on the back, there's just like a tie so you can kind of cinch the waist a little bit. Um, all of the little gold studs were in great shape. They were all there. I just thought this was really pretty, really cool. Great layering piece. So I'm excited to list that. Hope to get around 30 for that guy. Um, I got this pair of shoes. Now, the biggest tip like I shared with you in the thrift with me portion that I have for you when it comes to thrifting is go to the new racks first or go to the new, they have like carts sometimes for things like shoes and hard goods. This was on a new cart. So it was a cart of shoes that they just hadn't put out in their correct spots yet. Um, this is a beautiful pair of Cole Haan calf hair loafers, just slip on loafers. They're gorgeous. They're in a really good size. Let's see. They're in a size nine um and also they're like the kohan grand os which is 
Better than just regular Kohan, $6.80 into them. I'm hoping to get at least 40. They're in immaculate condition. They honestly look like they haven't really been worn. Like I'm sure someone got them and just never got around to wearing them or maybe they got a new job and they didn't need like career shoes. I don't know. Again, I like to just create narratives in my head for these people that I don't know and never will. I'm thankful that they donated these to that Goodwill because now they're in my possession and I'm excited to list them. Another piece for my son, um, yellow was the color of the week. They wanted $2.62 for this so what I paid a dollar and 31 cents amazing and it's just this cute little ombre top by the brand Russell I don't care about the brand this will just be really good for when he does like gymnastics and stuff so that is gonna go in his pile I got this for my daughter it is a pair of like snow pant bib I don't know what exactly to call them but it's by the North Face this was on a new rack um, and there are a couple little like spots and stuff but all we have to do is put it through the wash um this they wanted fifteen dollars and 43 cents for which again i'm totally fine with paying for um because it's something that she's going to use and then i can also list these when she's done with them and make some money on them uh you know i don't know if we're going to get any more snow this winter we barely got any we got some ice and that was kind of it and we did go and play outside in it which was fun um but next spring break we are planning a trip to more of like a mountainy ski resort type place no one in my family skis or snowboards so it'll be interesting i think we're going to try to take lessons and stuff but um i think these will be really good for her to have on a trip like that and then just in general if and when it does snow anymore this year or next winter she should be able to wear these for you know this year or next year i got another pair of shoes this again i think was actually i don't know if these were like on the new shoe cart um, but I feel like they were not with the shoes. They were just somewhere kind of random. Um, they're by the brand Vionic, which is one of my favorite bread and butter shoe brands to sell. Vionic just kind of has a cult following amongst more like mature women because the shoes are very comfortable. Um, yeah, just a dependable, trusty shoe. They wanted $6.80 for them. And these are in a women's size nine, which again is a really great size. So not sure exactly how much I can get for these. Hopefully at least 35 to 40 bucks on those. I was like really hoping I'd find some Levi's rib cage or wedgie jeans and I did and I found them in a really great size so these are Levi's rib cage straight ankle jeans in a size 20 W um, I should be able to get at least 40 bucks for these I would say and one general rule when you are looking for jeans but especially in like more plus size is you want to check for um, pilling like in the crotch just from when like the legs rub against each other, but then also you want to look for, oh, what is it called? I always forget when the camera is on. The thing that happens here, the stretching, the... I don't know, I just keep hoping this motion will make me say it. There's something that happens here. It's like a pulling, it's like a wrinkling, I don't know, but it's when like the spandex just kind of goes wonky in the jeans. Um, but these are in really, really great condition. There's like a little bit of dirt at the bottom here, but I literally just wiped it off with my hand. Um, the Levi's ribcage jeans are always a button fly. These are great, so I'm hoping to get at least 40, 50 for these. My ribcage jeans are one of my favorite jeans from Levi's, um, so yeah, very, very excited about these and their potential. Another pair of jeans, these are by the brand Driftwood, which I've had a lot of luck with in the past. Um, I do think that the craze has died down a little bit. These are the Maryland style in a size 28. They are a skinny jean, but I got them because of like the floral embroidery. I do think that the floral embroidered jeans from this brand tend to do a little bit better. They wanted $7.88 for these, which is also what I think they wanted for the Levi's ribcage jeans. I'm hoping to sell these for at least 35. I think that's about what they seem to be going for. Some were listed much higher than that, but I think consistently selling around that like 30 to $35 mark. I also was like hoping I would find some aloe yoga because I feel like it's such a trendy brand right now. So these are a size large, which is great. And I don't know if you can see aloe. These are like a gray pair of joggers, which I'm very excited about. I love joggers um, and will pay good money for them because I will wear them all day, every day. Like joggers are so much more comfortable to me than leggings. I'd rather wear joggers any day. Um, there's the logo again. There is some work I have to do on these if I remember correctly, just like a little bit of 
pilling. I think I have to put them through the wash. Um, these they wanted $4.89 for, and I believe this was on a new rack. Yeah, there's just like little little things that I just need to pick off here on the ribbing, but I think that'll be really easy. So not sure how much these go for because I have not run comps yet, but I'm hoping that they do really well. I'm also not sure if these are men's or women's. I'm kind of hoping that they're men's because I feel like men's stuff generally just sells better, but we'll see. This I actually got for my friend G1 son because everyone here is a Bulls fan. Like my family, we're all Bulls fans. They're Bulls fans. This is his size. And I showed it to my son and he's like, but I want that. Can you save it for me? And I was like, Bubba's, what's going to happen is he's going to wear it. His brother's going to wear it. You're going to wear it. And then we're going to give it back to them for their youngest one to wear it. Like that's just kind of how we cycle through clothes between the two of our families. They have three boys. Two of them are older than my son. So yeah, it goes top boy, middle boy, my boy, their youngest boy. And that's the hope and dream that I have for this zip up hoodie. Um, this was another yellow tag, so they wanted $5.44 for it. I can't do the math right now. What is it, like $2.77? Is that right? Did I do it? 72 cents, something like that. Pretty good. There's a couple little pulls and snags and stuff, but you know, it's wearable. It's it's fine. I got this Tory Sport, which is Tory Birch, um, this little like very preppy like what is this like chevron dress this is in a size large and comps were pretty decent for this actually i think they were like 40 50 dollars and they wanted seven dollars and 88 cents for this so i definitely did pick that up i'm hoping that this will sell pretty quickly especially as we approach the spring months we'll see what happens um <laughs> so this is a pair of Nike joggers for men in a size small. My husband is not a size small. He is very much a size medium, verging on being a size large. But I was like, do you think you can fit into these? Because he also loves joggers and lives in them. He was like, no, I don't think. And I was like, can you just try them on? And then we just had the best laugh with him trying to put these on. Um, but they are like kind of an unflattering color. They're like a taupey. I don't know. I'm not like obviously doing a good job of selling these to you guys, but also for the record, I don't make these haul videos so that you guys will hopefully buy things from me. I just make them to show you what I'm picking up and how much I'm hoping to get for things so that you can learn from them. But they're in like, I would call an unflattering color because I feel like they're kind of close to the color of skin. And honestly, when he was like trying to get them on, it just kind of looked like he wasn't wearing bottoms. And I was like, this is not okay for a number of reasons. But they only wanted $4.89 for these. I'm hoping I can sell them for at least $25 to someone out there who wants a pair of skin color joggers that are just very tight and yeah Next up I got this pair of shorts for me This is just the brand all in motion, which is Target They wanted three dollars and twenty six cents for them But I need more like lined workout shorts and these are lined and I like the length on them They're like a little bit longer in length So we'll see how those work out if they don't fit me the way that I hope they do um, I probably will not list them But I'll probably just sell them in a pop-up consignment sale that we have come through our town twice a year I did find a couple pair of these Spanx like faux leather liquid leggings um, This is in a size extra small and the main reason I picked them up is because they were asking two dollars and 83 cents for these I feel like that's how much they charge for leggings um, But I should be able to sell these for at least like 30 35 dollars. So very excited about that I have um, these same exact leggings and I do still wear them from time to time and then not only did I find those but I found another pair in a size small and they were asking the same two dollars and 83 cents so you know I picked those up um, so I'm excited to get those listed they are very wrinkly I'm gonna have to like steam them but they will be perfect once I get them through the wash I also found this jumpsuit by the brand Ruli they wanted seven dollars and 88 cents for this this is the tag um I don't know, like I have had mixed experiences with this brand. I'll stand up so you can see it in its entirety. But I picked it up because, I don't know, I feel like jumpsuits in general are kind of cool. It's very lightweight. Um, it'd be perfect for like the spring or even the fall. And let me see what it's made out of. Let me see if I can find the tag. It's made out of 100% cotton. Um, there was another Ruli piece that I left behind. It was right next to this one. I left it behind because looking at it even though it had kind of like interesting texture on the fabric i was like this dress is just not going to photograph well 
like no one's gonna stop scrolling because of this dress. This piece, however, I felt like was interesting enough that people might be like, okay, and hopefully I can sell that for like $35, $40. Um, next up, I found this pair of Athleta joggers, so it was just a good day for joggers. This is in a size 8, and they're like this interesting, kind of like tannish color with a very, very faint print, if you can see that. The lighting in my basement is not very good. Um, I don't know, hoping these will sell for at least 30 They wanted $6.63 for these. When I first started reselling... There was, um, I remember I found this pair. I think I found two pairs of Athleta. They were kind of like joggers. Um, they were like the city jogger or something. I don't remember. And I remember looking up comps and realizing that they sold for so much. And I was so excited because it was one of my first like wins as far as sourcing is concerned. And since then, I feel like I've just had kind of a soft spot for Athleta, specifically their joggers. Now those were like black and much more sleek than these. I don't know if those will actually do very well, but we'll, we'll try them out and see. Now, I do not normally source kids' clothing, but I was looking in the girls' section for my daughter, and they had this dress by the brand T Collection, which can actually do pretty well. It can sell for like $25, even, you know, sometimes $30, and um, they only wanted $2.62 for this. I did ask my daughter if she would wear this because it's her size. It's absolutely not her style, so she was like, no. But I will go ahead and get this listed, and I will list this to Kittizen, even though I'm not really selling on Kittizen anymore. I'm not actively listing new things there. But if it's like a children's item like this and a children's brand that is popular on Kittizen, then I'll go ahead and list to Kittizen because it honestly barely takes any time to list to Kittizen. I'm just done listing women's clothing on Kittizen and also um, like listing kids clothing in general because it generally doesn't sell for very much But something like that where I can sell it for like 25 to 30 dollars I'll go ahead and list that this is a men's brand Billy Reed, which is a pretty good brand um, It is a button-up shirt and you guys know I hate Selling button-up shirts, but it's in pretty good shape. It's not super wrinkly I gotta just keep it like that and hurry up and get it listed before it gets all wrinkled. It's in a size medium I'm hoping to make at least $30 on this and they wanted Let's see they wanted how much? I don't know it doesn't say on here, but I think it was five dollars and 44 cents That's how much they were selling all of their shirts for I typically do not pick up this brand either I pass on it all the time but I stopped because I thought it was interesting and I don't know. So it's Armani Exchange, which, you know, is like a mall brand. You can find Armani Exchange at the mall. It's in a men's size large, but I thought it was a very interesting looking sweater. It's like this gray knit sweater. Now, I do feel like I found a flaw on it later when I was processing my inventory and putting all of the information into this perfectly. Um, it is a quarter zip. Let's see. Where's the flaw? Well, first of all, they only wanted $5.44 for it. I feel like maybe there was a stain somewhere but I looked up this style of sweater online oh and it's got like the thumb holes the little cuffins that's kind of cool you don't expect to see that on a sweater like this it's got like a okay there's one little like stain here that I actually think I'll be able to just like rub out I can use like a baby wipe or something again the lighting is very poor so you might not be able to see it it's like brown it kind of looks like chocolate or something but I'll be able to get rid of that and hopefully this sells for like 40 or 50 dollars it's a very substantial sweater I do believe there's like some wool in there let me see what are you made out of I just folded it nicely too but for you I'm gonna go digging for the material content where where are you? Acrylic, nylon, wool, rayon, angora, rabbit hair. Yeah, I can feel that rabbit hair. So, um, yeah, interested to see how this does because like I said, I do not pick up this brand. Um, I definitely would not pick it up for women's clothing, but I'm kind of intrigued to see if that does okay for men. I guess we'll see. This is another men's piece, and I thought this was very interesting as well. This is um, a collaboration that Champion did with Todd Snyder. I don't know who Todd Snyder is. Um, it's in a size large, but it seemed like some of the pieces from this collaboration were doing really, really well. It's a very thick, like I would call it a sweatshirt material, short sleeve top. It's basically like a short sleeve sweatshirt. Um, and some of these pieces were selling for like... 40 50 dollars so i'm hoping that this is in that same ballpark 544 is what they were asking for it and it's just a really cool piece i got this pair of shorts for my son they are nike in a size six which is how old he is 
$2.62. That's a no-brainer. Next up, I actually got this for myself slash my daughter. Like, I asked my daughter if she would wear it, and she's like, yeah, um, I got a couple things for her. This is a woman size extra small, but the truth is she is almost as tall as me. She is 10 years old. She is almost as tall as me. Now I am five feet tall, so it's not like it's very hard for her to get up to my height, but yeah, she's gonna be able to wear this very soon. It's just a very cute, like bubblegum pink, um, half zip Nike pullover windbreaker. It's got the Nike in the center. I could definitely sell this and make pretty good money on it, but I think between the two of us, between her and myself, I think we'll wear it. So $5.44 is what they were asking, but this is gonna stay in the park household for now. This is, okay, I don't, let's see. I don't know if this is a dress or a tunic. It is definitely a tunic because if on me, it's barely covering my booty on a regular person with regular length legs this is is gonna show everything it's gonna be very inappropriate the brand is Jude Connolly it's in a size large Jude Connolly to me is very similar to like Jay McLaughlin it's got a very similar feel when it comes to their like almost like scuba knit type things um, I forgot what Jay McLaughlin calls it their Catalina knit it feels very much like that um, I, what would you call this print like a zebra print? I think it's like a zebra print, but it's just like a three-fourth sleeve tunic It's a yellow tag. So originally they wanted 544, but I paid half of that and I have like weirdly good luck with this brand Especially with their dresses. So I'm kind of curious to see how much I can get for this top I'm hoping I can get at least 25 for it um, but this was kind of just like laying on top of like a dresser or something inside of Goodwill and I snatched it up and I was like, okay, I guess you're coming home with me. And then I got another just beautiful vintage piece. Again, I didn't really care about the brand, but oh my gosh. Oh my God. <laughs> Look at that. So this side felt very like 80s to me, very like retro. And then this side is very grandma core, if you can see all that floral detail. I just thought it was so beautiful. It, um, I paid $5.44 for it. The brand is Studio by Michelle Stewart. Again, it's like a Raimi cotton, and then there's some acrylic thrown in there blend. Um, but I just thought it was such a pretty sweater. And it's kind of cropped already too. This would be so cute with a pair of jeans and you just tuck the front in a little bit. I love it i love it and i fully expect this to sell on depop that is everything from the second goodwill so take note of how you felt like that goodwill compared to the first and we're gonna get to our final goodwill haul all right the final goodwill was the let's see east peoria location this was the location last year where they pushed out a cart of new items including some new shoes and i found two pairs of fry boots it was an amazing day plus like some other really great shoes um shoes were honestly kind of sad at this place today but they did have some other really great items so this is a dress by the brand monroe i haven't found this ever in the wild but i believe it is a revolve brand and comps for it were pretty good so it's like this kind of sweatshirt dress in blue stripes um no pockets but again comps were pretty decent for this there are um thumb holes or cuffins and they were asking seven dollars and 23 cents like i believe at a minimum i should be able to get 35 for this but if i remember correctly i think comps were even higher and it looked like they got this maybe at like some kind of consignment store because you can see there's like another tag on it and it looks very consignment-y and that place was asking 54 dollars for this so crazy um this is by the brand southern tide it is a men's sweater and i got it for a couple of reasons one their sweaters were comping pretty well it's in a size extra large which is great and i just really liked this cable knit design like this kind of fisherman cable knit design i just thought it was very classy again very preppy so yeah this one i had five dollars and 44 cents into um i also got this patagonia sweater i feel like this has to have been donated by the same guy. This is in a size extra large. They also wanted $5.44 for this. And it's like this gray striped sweatshirt, just a nice pullover. Um, not sure how much I can price this at, hoping to get at least, you know, like 30-ish dollars for that. 
This was on a new rack and I just left where I was. I think I was looking at like women's jeans or something and I just basically ran like, like as respectful of a run as you can do inside of an establishment, but like sprinted <laughs> to the new rack before anyone else could because I wanted to get to the good stuff first. And I found this little number and I found this for me. This is the first time that I have actually seen they're like new pieces, so you can recycle things through Lululemon that are old Lululemon and they will turn it into like new pieces, which is cool. If resellers can't get to it, I guess, um, it's nice that they're reusing things and just not participating as much to all of the wastefulness that you see in the clothing textile market. Um, so it feels really nice and I believe it's in a size two let's see oh no it's in a size four which is great two is honestly a little bit tight on me um so this is gonna be mine and they only wanted three dollars and 26 cents for it like how great is that so super excited about that lululemon piece this is another brand that i don't typically pick up like it's very expensive retail and some people have really good luck with it i just typically do not um but i got it for a couple of reasons the brand is french connection it's in a women's size eight and it's this like animal print dress with long sleeves, just like a, you know, it hugs your body. It's kind of bodycon. Okay, it's viscose rayon polyamide nylon. I thought it was cashmere. Like it feels like cashmere. It's not cashmere, but it's very lightweight. It's very slinky. And I don't know, I just wanted to give the brand a chance. We'll see how it does. And it was yellow tag. So they wanted $7.23 for it, but I only had to pay half of that. So I paid what, like $3.60 something? And then I got what I think is like a vintage Peruvian connection dress. Um, I love this brand. I've just never seen this label before. And it's a pretty like long sleeve dress. Um, I believe it's maxi length made in Peru. Maybe it's more of like a midi length because it does hit like a maxi for me, which means that on a regular person, it's probably a midi. Again, it's a yellow tag, so they were asking $7.88. I ended up paying like $3.60 something, and it's a really nice dress. It's in really great condition still, even for it being probably a little bit older of a piece. Hoping to get at least $35 for that. And then I have been watching so much fitness content on YouTube. Like probably my favorite person that I have discovered is Natasha Oshien. It's French and my French is horrible. She is just her and her boyfriend Mario are my new favorite people on the face of this planet. Like I love their videos. If you want to get inspired and motivated to work out and you want to learn the science behind how things work in the fitness space, I highly recommend her channel. She does not need my recommendation because this girl has like 1.6 million subs or something like that, but I cannot get enough of her videos. Um, but just in general, in that fitness space, I feel like so many fitness influencers um, are sponsored by Gymshark. And I never really cared about Gymshark before, but everyone who would wear it on their channels like would look so good. And I remember being like, I hope I find some Gymshark today. And I did. And not only did I find some Gymshark, now this is not like, actual workout wear but it is new with tags so that was kind of exciting and this particular dress it's the legacy fitness sweater dress it was comping pretty well and that was before i even knew that mine was new with tags i didn't see the tag until i was processing it once i got it home but it's just like a short sleeve hooded dress um, and it's like sweatshirt sweatshirt material it has their logo on the front I do feel like I remember hearing from people that Gymshark is one of those brands that will get you when it comes to copyright infringement. Oh, there's like regular pockets as well as the kangaroo pocket, which is kind of cool. But I think they do come after resellers for using their stock photos, so I'll just try to take the best photos that I can of this, which I don't think will be very hard to do because, you know, this, this will photograph well. So that was exciting to find a Gymshark piece when I was like, I hope I find some Gymshark. And this was $7.88. That's how much they were asking for. And like I said, um, comps were looking pretty good before I even knew that this one was new with tags. With it being new with tags, I think I can hopefully get like $40, $45 ish for that. And then I did get some shoes. You guys know that Nikes just scare the crap out of me because there's too many styles. I don't know very much about them. But these said like, okay. Well, first of all, these, it was very easy to just do Google Lens for because they're so specific looking. And Google Lens told me that this was a good shoe. Um, I believe it's like Kevin Durant or something. So it says, I, I guess that says KD. I don't really know how that says KD. They're like, 
air zoom. I don't know. Full length Nike zoom strobe. I don't, there's so many words on here and I don't know which ones are important, but I typed in the style name. They appear to be pretty decent shoes. They're in a US size nine. Now, when I got them home and I was processing them, I noted, and they're like the 14th edition. I don't know, so many words on these shoes. But when I was processing them, I noticed that there were some flaws. Like if you look here, you can see the wear right there. I think there's a little bit more on the other shoe. I don't know, they're not, like other than that, they're in really, really good condition, just like little, bits of wear here and there, but it looked like I could get like north of $60, $75 for these. I obviously have to do more research and I'm probably wrong. I probably will have to sit on them for like three years and they'll sell for like $15, but they wanted $6.80, not a huge gamble. And typically with especially brands like Nike, the weirder they look, the more they're worth is the general rule of thumb I have found. Um, these are from a brand that I've never heard of called Call It Spring. Is that what it's called? Let's see. Call It Spring. It's not a fantastic brand. It's not a brand that, um, you know, go. it's not a brand that retails for a ton. I just thought these were really kind of trendy. They're like a very chunky shoe. Um, they've got the high ankle and they've got like a bit of a platform on the bottom. This is one of those instances where I'm going for trend over brand and they're in really great condition. They don't really have a lot of wear to them. Um, yeah, so I'm excited to see how these do. I don't even think that they're real leather, but again, I kind of expect these to sell on a platform like Depop. They wanted $8.98 for them. We'll see how they do. Call it spring. And then I feel like once I found these, I kept finding call it spring shoes, but they were not trendy enough to warrant me picking them up just because of like the brand. And like I said, the brand itself actually isn't that good. So um, next up we have this pair of Vionic ankle booties. Um, I don't know that I've ever sold Vionic boots. So these are like a nice black suede upper. They're in a bigger size. Let's see, what size are you? Oh no, don't tell, okay, phew. They're in a size 11, which is great. Um, and then, you know, Vionic is just known for their comfort. They're in really good shape. They wanted 11.16 for these, but I'm confident I can sell these for at least 40, 50 bucks. And then I've just got two more. I got this pair of Dingo Cowboy Western boots. I don't know anything about cowboy boots as well, but what I know is that cowboy boots can do pretty well. Dingo is a pretty decent cowboy boot brand. Um, and even if they're pretty messed up, you can still get good money for them. These are not messed up. These are made in the USA. They're a size nine. They are not real leather. It's man-made leather. It's faux leather. Um, but I'm hoping I can get like 40, 50 bucks for these. These are actually in very, very good condition, as you can see. And they wanted $11 and 16 cents for these as well. And then last but not least, I pick up, I picked up this pair of boots by Naturalizer. They are, um, in a nice neutral brown, $11 and 16 cents. I kind of feel like these are faux leather too. Let's see. Naturalizer. Oh no, they're leather. Okay, great. And they're in a size 11W, which is one of the main reasons I got them. Naturalizer surprisingly does really well. Um, there's like a certain pair of pumps by this brand that I consistently get like $50 for, even if it's not real leather. But these I'm hoping I can get at least $50 for. I genuinely don't think that these have been worn. Like if you look at the bottoms, I, it doesn't look like there's any wear and they're in amazing pristine condition when you look at the exterior of them. They are also just very soft. I don't know. They, they're very soft and they have a lot of like, I don't know how to explain it. Like you can like kind of press into them a little bit. They're in really great condition. They are very high quality, hoping that these do really well. I gotta get these listed ASAP though, because pretty soon nobody wants to be purchasing this kind of stuff. They're gonna be looking for like their sandals and more springy summery shoes. All right, that is everything I got from three different Goodwills in Peoria. Let me know which Goodwill you felt like was the best. The first one, which was the Pioneer Parkway location. The second one, which was University or third, which was East Peoria. I will tell you now which place I felt like was the best because hopefully at this point you've already typed in your 
your response in the comments, but I thought the East Peoria location was best. I will say too, at the university location, I actually found a couple grandpa sweaters. I texted pictures of them to my students who were at the conference because I have a student in particular who like that's what they wear is like grandpa sweaters. And I was like, dude, doesn't this look like something that Blank would wear? And the other two who were not that student were like, oh my gosh, yes. That student never responded and I just left. And then like an hour or two later, they were like, did you get it? Oh my gosh, I want it so bad. And because I'm like the best teacher ever, I went back because I knew exactly where I had left it. It was still there. It was like 15 minutes before they closed, but I went back, I got the sweater for them. I don't have it here to show you today because like I said, I gave it to them, but they were thrilled. So I got a lot of really great pieces that I'm very, very, very excited about listing. Hopefully you guys have been doing some great sourcing in the year 2024 as well. If you enjoyed this, if you felt like you learned about any new brands or anything like that, make sure to hit that like button on your way out. And if you're brand new to my channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button as you know, I will have that clothes mentor haul coming out soon, as well as a bunch of other videos. So thank you guys so much for your support and for watching. I appreciate you and love you, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.